I have standards. <laughs> and uh, where are they? I left them at home. <laughs> Good. Well, then here we go. All right. So, uh, welcome to the first ever Craftcast, the official podcast of Craft Vapory. Uh, this is our first ever. So, I'm sure we'll figure it out as we go. Uh, I am joined today by Meriwether Morris uh, from Craft Vapory, who's our head of procurement and uh, and my second love in my life. Uh, and also joined by David Farentino. Hello. From Ragtime. Um, so, great. Welcome. Thanks. Um, so, uh, you know, because it's a podcast and we will probably random, randomly stumble upon all things ragtime, all things craft, uh, probably good to start off with, you know, what's kind of going on at craft. So, uh, so Meriwether, what's, uh, what's new at craft? Actually, a lot of things. As of January 1st, we have all new pricing, which is pretty cool. That definitely is something that the industry has been asking for and we agree. But we Lowered all, pricing, right? Yes. Yep. No one wants higher prices. <laughs> uh, sometimes people want to pay more. I just don't think our customers do. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. Um, we also have a new thing where the charge dates used to be on a set 15th of every month. Now you guys can pick your own charge dates, which is pretty cool. Yeah, um, one of our uh, most requested new additions. People wanting to know if they can adjust when we uh, take their money. And also this month, um, a few months ago, Josh and I went to Vape Summit in Houston and judged the whole show and picked out the best of each of our flavor categories. And this month, uh, we are bringing in six new brands, five of which have award-winning juices. So rock and line up this month. So let's just clarify, we're an official partner of Vape Summits. We do the best of awards. Uh, we give 17 awards out. Uh, one for each of our 16 flavor categories and then an overall best of show. What are, uh, so all of the new brands this month, how many brands are we up to now? Um, we're up to just about 100 brands. Wow. Uh, and so, okay, so six new brands this month. What are the new brands? We have Traditional Juice, we have Monarch, we have Majestic, there's three. We have King's Crest. Um, what other ones do we have? Vape Storm. Vape Storm and Dripped Life out of Minnesota. I like how she stopped halfway to kind of check in on the count. Like, there's three. It was brilliant. It was. It was good. I'm I, impressed. Because I, I have a hard time counting to six quite often. Um, I know. I handle the numbers we order. Maybe that's, you know, numbers aren't my strong suit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also have recently introduced an eight bottle box. Uh, many of our customers were asking for more than six bottles, which when we first started seemed like way more juice than anyone could vape. But uh, since then, I've upped my consumption to close to a bottle every two days. So uh, I totally get it. And we had a couple customers who were on double four bottle, double five bottle boxes a month. So the eight bottle box is uh, is new. And obviously the more bottles you buy or, or subscribe to, the cheaper the price gets. Um, and then we also have our largest sale ever going on right now. That is true. We're, we have massive discounts on, on a lot of amazing hardware. Um, we have stuff, um, that, you know, there's stuff that you're not going to see everywhere else. We have the last of the Krakens, um, which is an awesome Genesis tank. We have stuff like the four nines and Tarsius and whatnot. We also have like smaller stuff on sale that you're not getting everywhere else. Pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, I would say that essentially every mod we've got with one or two exceptions is, uh, is on sale right now. So um and let's see what else is new at craft right now um we are also starting our distribution business so craft distribution is uh is kicking off uh really kind of getting some steam this month we currently are offering six brands of which we're happy to say ragtime is one of them yay and uh and yeah so we're looking forward to being able to service the needs of not only vapors everywhere but vape shops everywhere it's a pretty fun thing because with our customers, we try to really tailor things and create a personal experience, getting to know everyone on an individual basis, not just being 
something you sign up for online and then it shows up at your door, really creating experience with the customer. And we're trying to bring that to our distribution as well. So when we work with people, they're not just sending uh, numbers of what they want into a big behemoth and juice spits out. They actually have a relationship where they can discuss and learn and grow together. Yeah, we're, uh, I'm, I'm very excited about the distribution side of, of the business. Um, but let's go back to what, you know, the, the main core of what we do on the subscription program. You used to be our head of curation. That I did. And have since been promoted to run our procurement department. Um, tell me about the process of curating at Craft. What goes into picking, you know, the right juice for someone? It's kind of like... I'm trying to think of like an analogy of what it's like and there's nothing really out there like there's wine of the month clubs there's like other stuff like that but they kind of just send you a sample box of whatever for us it's really curating down to what each palette wants no two palettes are the same so when you come in we have a big array of different flavor categories from tropical fruits to berries to baked goods creams custards vanillas candies breakfast cereals stuff like that and not only are you able to say whether you do or don't like each of those categories, but you can have a dialogue going with your curator. There's a comment section within um, where you sign up and you can say, hey, I'm loving tropical fruits, but you know, papaya is just not quite up my alley. Or, hey, I'm looking for breakfast cereals, but I want more Fruit Loops, not so much, you know, like Apple Jacks. And you can kind of create an experience like that. As a curator, you get to know people's palates. We have an awesome thing in each box, a rating system. You can put on your best of the box on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all sorts of stuff. And from there, we can see more what within that flavor category, within what you asked for, we can see more in depth what flavors you're liking. So if we're seeing subtle nuances, like you're liking flavors that hit more of kind of like a triangle shape on your palate, something kind of that's a little bit sharper, then we're going to give you more flavors with, say, citrus in them. If you're liking more dome flavors like creams, we might also look into giving you nuts that have that same kind of feeling on your palate. So you just sort of introduced this whole concept of referring to flavors as shapes. So I feel like now you have to explain that a little bit. Um, it's the same with food. Growing up, my parents are really into food. My mom catered. We know a lot of people in the food industry. I know David, that's where he got his start as well. And when you think about how you hit palates, like when you try something on your tongue, you're not just feeling it everywhere. It's not just kind of like something that's happening in your brain. The f where it hits first is your tongue and how it hits your palate. Um, whether or not you're feeling the taste on the tip of your tongue and kind of the sides, that would be kind of a triangle flavor. If you're feeling it more generally throughout your tongue, a dome and that in between is more of a trapezoid, if that makes sense. So you classify all of the flavors into one or more of those shapes? Yes. And then you use the shapes to help pick similar yeah. matches that may be outside of the normal flavor profile. Yeah, and initially we try to make sure if someone has kind of more of a well-rounded, I don't want to say well-rounded because no palate's not good, but I'm saying if someone is able to explore flavors that are in all different shapes, you know, we want to make sure that we're getting the trapezoids, the triangles, and the domes in their box. So we'll do a wide array. Of, then we can see from there if they're picking certain flavors that are in one direction, then we'll narrow it down to flavors that fit into that shape. It's kind of a weird concept, but I like it. It's unique, like everything we do at Craft. You know, just trying to really tailor everything to each individual, not just seeing everyone as like fitting into like three different sections. You know. Awesome. Uh, I should take a pause and just say that it is really cool that we are here in the Super Creative Studios. Uh, really happy to be a part of the Super Creative Network, the home of Kevin Pereira's Pointless Podcast, which we've been a guest on a couple of times. Uh, and so please feel free to you know, check out the supercreative.tv website and check out all of their podcasts. And, uh, and you'll be able to get, you know, once we have past episodes of Craft, you'll be able to get them there as well. Um, I want to switch to our guest, David. So, uh, so that would be me. Welcome. Thank you for being our first ever guest on the Craftcast. I'm honored. Um, helping us kind of work out the kinks and uh, and take this from shit show to uh, to the big show. Um, so uh, I know a lot about your brand. We've worked together, you know, throughout. You you were into the 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 craft ecosystem 
pretty early on. But uh, you know, I want I want our listeners, uh, you know, our our old cu- customers, our new customers, and our new potential customers to kind of hear from you about the brand. And so, why don't you kind of introduce us to Ragtime? Okay. All right. Um, well, first, thanks for having me. Sure. I, I mean, really a pleasure to be. I here. figured you would be good for you know general chit chat and banter, and you wouldn't give us sort of the straight and narrow kind of interview. So I'm I'm gonna hold your feet to the fire to. To be interesting. Awesome. Can't wait. Can't <laughs> wait for it. Um, you know, what, what Meriwether was talking, I was just entranced by how beautiful she is. And she looks lovely just, today, doesn't I, she? I, I usually look pretty haggard in the office. You know? So you got dolled up just for the craft cast. Yeah, like three hours ago when we were madly packing boxes together. Right, so those juices. of you who are listening to the audio-only version, you are uh, missing that Meriwether has really kind of gone above and beyond to, uh, to step up. And those of you who are watching on YouTube... Um, I'm sure we'll agree in the comments, right? So there you go. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it, while while I'm talking, I, I hope that the camera just does a still on Meriwether, and you can just listen to my voice. And... I think the beauty of doing it here is that they're recording both angles, so they're oh, going to see you and Meriwether all at the same time. I yeah. think you look stunning. Yeah, Thank you're you. you look pretty today as well. All oh, right. The yeah. blues just you're rocking it. It's I'm a winter. That's why. Oh, okay. Blue works for me. Winter is coming. Go. Yeah. You'll have to explain what that means to me at some point, either now or off air. It's a color palette thing. Uh, uh, you're a winter color palette. I'm a winter guy. color okay. palette thing. I won Game of Thrones. Winter yeah. is coming. Yeah, winter winter <laughs> is coming. And he's here. So, so okay, winter is here. Game of Thrones is coming soon, right? Yeah. Okay. Not soon enough. Yeah. I, we all watch together. It's a few it's a few months away. Do you know that this next season is half of the timeline that they the the way that the books were written, the next two books in the series kind of take half of the characters and split them up into one book and then half of the characters along the same timeline and they're moved to the the next book. So we're only going to get half the story this season and then the season after is going to be the other half of the same concurrent timeline. Fantastic. I don't know how I feel about that. I've already decided that I didn't didn't like that approach and I kind of wanted to know what was going on from all aspects, but I, I guess... I reserve the right to still love the show. I should learn how to read so <laughs> I can get into the books and really follow. This is why what I have my wife about. because what she does is read all of the books. Oh, okay. There and you then go. she gives me short synopses as we're walking into the movie theater or starting the the TV show. She explains it to right. You. So, uh, so to the the Hunger Games. She's read all of the books and literally as we're going into the theater, she'll be like, "Okay, so here's what's about to happen." And so I've just sort of learned that there's, it's all spoiler alerts with her. Like she read the book and she knows exactly what's going to happen. But she's read oh. every book. She's yeah. a genius. So like, Game of Thrones, her. she literally read in like five days. She read like a book a day. To me, it says, I see someone reading five books in five days and I go get a job. Right. Yeah. She is like, oh my God, my life is so enriched because I've read these books. The Hunger Games she read in a weekend. Um, wow. Voracious reader. That's amazing. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm scatterbrained, which is the uh, technical term for ADD. <laughs> right. And yeah. it, I will read the same page five times before I turn a page. You know, I am the same way, and that's why I have her. So I li- yeah. will we'll be at home, and, like, manuals come with devices and appliances, right. and I just right. can't, here, read this. And, you, you know, what's funny is you'll, you'll find a lot of people like us in this industry, in the vaping industry. People who like, don't read manuals. People, well, just people that, that are easily distracted and do nine things and like to build coils and move on to mods and batteries and this and that. And I, I just I find a lot of easily distracted folks uh, in our industry. Yeah, I, uh, I, I agree, but I sort of love the amount of passion that comes out of those people. Like, oh, I, you know, certainly. But it, and, it, and it's just a matter of kind of catching when they move that facet of their focus to your thing. Right. Getting that full attention and then we're creative. Their, we're creative folks. Uh, creative speak lot. for yourself there. No. Um, okay. So tell me, tell me about ragtime. Tell me. You oh, know, are we I, there yeah, yet? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's. let's we're all over Let's the keep focus. <laughs> Let's uh, or not, but um, <laughs> you mean that now that you've admitted that you have ADD, to... and I've got to keep you on topic. Right, Let's right, keep right. you on topic. Okay. So, uh, so, so, okay. So, tell, to walk me through the line, and I'll give you from yeah. beginning from beginning to now, and I'll try and keep it uh, simple. So, don't or don't, you know. Oh, we we'll be here all all day. Uh, I think you know it's our a quick engineer story. Chris. Oh, there's editing that I refer to as bacon sandwich. Okay. 
and you'd have to watch the pointless you are podcast too. Hung- hungry. Sorry. That's all um, right. Half the reason I vape is so I don't eat. Um, so you know, I bacon sandwich is also vaping here with us. He can edit out whatever it is that you don't want in there, but don't edit any of this out. Okay, great. Great. Uh, all right. So uh, let's see. I was a pretty heavy pack and a half a day cigarette smoker. I started smoking when I was a kid and, uh, and, and, and loved it, you know, um, up until I was an adult and started middle age and couldn't walk up a flight of stairs without hacking up half a lung and uh you know and fear sets in and then now you're addicted to cigarettes and you can't quit did you love it the day you quit it did you love oh, did cigarettes I... and smoking oh no i the hated de- cigarettes years before i quit but i loved uh what well, hey look i love nicotine and uh that that was really the the stimulant that you know it's funny we were talking about add and everything you know that that nicotine is actually a pretty effective um, uh, treatment for someone like myself that gets easily distracted. A little, a, a mild stimulant like nicotine um, can actually help me focus. Okay. So I agree. I think that that's uh, one of the one of the draws that uh, physiologically that I had to it. Um, that's one of the reasons why I was really attracted to it. As an adult, as a kid, I was just uh, being a, a punk ass and, and mimicking all my friends that smoked in the 80s. Um, so I wanted to quit, you know, and, and look, I wanted to quit when I was uh, probably 19 or 20 was when I first said, hey, I got to put these down and did that for a few months and then started back up again and again and again and again and again and nothing ever worked and then all the other treatments on the markets the patches the pills the inhalers they came and went and nothing ever stuck and uh and you know i i think i went cold turkey a couple of times successfully for perhaps uh, about a year or so so i mean that's a pretty long time that's actually successful i mean most people are like yeah i went cold turkey and i lasted for four days and you know and then i was right i don't think i think my longest cold turkey was like 48 hours (laughs) it's a tough it's a tough one but you know you can measure success i think you and correct me if I'm wrong, but success when it comes to uh, cessation of smoking cigarettes really is measured after the year point. So it's those that stay off of cigarettes after a year. That's how you when you start really measuring success. Okay. And uh, all of a sudden, I turn my head, and there's these electronic cigarettes and we're and i'm talking about e-cigs right the, the cig lights right exactly and um what was the first brand that you tried um gosh i don't know but i know i spent a lot of money on it and it was crap but it was good enough to get me excited about vaping okay um And I did not have a cigarette when I bought my first, you know, I I went online. I just searched for it. Mm -hmm. I heard of this technology that uh, back then, and we're talking about in in, uh, 2011, was the technology was nothing as it is now. Um, And I heard of these cigalike things, and I think I saw them in the 7-Elevens, and I looked it up online, and... I thought, okay, I'm going to do this. And I bought a starter kit, which was something that looked like a pack of cigarettes. And what was the, uh, gosh, I can't, I just, I'm going blank on the brand. But, um, you know, I got a couple of these little Sigalike batteries and the proprietary cartomizers that you plug into them got menthol tobacco well like, i got no i you know right. I, I didn't i never liked menthols but it they had a they i got all the five flavors they had and i think one was like vanilla and one was tobacco and one was chocolate and one was cherry and uh and one might have been menthol 
and I really took to oh well, one was coffee and the, and the and what's funny is the coffee flavor was the best one out of the lot and then I think the tobacco wasn't wasn't too bad either and it right. was all it's all Chinese brand mm-hmm. liquid that was that was in it and all those all those juices come out of decaying boga, right. boga right. and decaying yeah and uh I still think that that China makes some of the best uh, artificial tobaccos uh, on the market. Fascinating. Yeah, okay, because it seems to be like the industry, you know, has definitely gone to. I want my juice made in the U.S. I, right. You know, um, and and people tend to, you know, tend to look poorly on Chinese-made products in general. Yeah, um, I'm not quite sure why. Um, well, I, some of the, I mean, my laptop was made in China. Mm-hmm. My phone was made in China. I mean, some yeah. of my favorite things. 99% are, of all the technology we're using in the industry is made in China. Most of this room was manufactured in China. Yeah. Bacon sandwich was made in China. Yeah. My underwear. I have a cousin made in China. That's <laughs> probably <laughs> topic for a different podcast, but yeah. I think that counts. <laughs> I'll count that in. I like her is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So, like, um, no, I mean, I, I was, I, I think the real trick to getting a good product out of China for import into the U.S. is making sure that the manufacturing standards are you right. know, up to snuff. Sure. You want to make sure that the stuff isn't kind of mixed in a walk in a back right. room without, you know. But, you know, companies like Decang and Hankson have been making flavors for this technology since it's been around, since before, since prior to 2007. And uh, they, they, have, um, they have the space... And the, they have the lab space to do it. You see some of these uh, places where they where they manufacture flavorings, and uh, I'm jealous. I wish the United States had uh, some of the technology that they're. I think it's coming. It I think, is. You know, absolutely. and this is definitely the year where it's I saw more and more coming. labs, and you know, people. Well, there's kind demand of, for it. Right. There's demand. Um, so back to my riveting story about yes. uh, how I got into this. So I I. Bought this starter pack. I, I bought a, the highest nicotine level they had was uh, 18 milligram. And for anyone listening, what 18 milligram really translates to is 1.8% um, nicotine by volume. And uh, I, I did that and I didn't have a cigarette for four days. And I was blown away. I was amazed. And I was really excited. And... Like I said, four days later, I, I had a cigarette and it tasted terrible, but I knew that I wasn't getting enough nicotine from the device that I was using. Right. So I started researching and then in my research, I found what then was considered like the high end e-cig, which was the Joytech, um, the Ego style batteries. Right. And... I thought, okay, I'm going to go to that. That was moving up in the world. So I, I, I put down the Sigalike and then I got the, the Ego battery, which was a little bit more powerful. And then I found, uh, I found a vape shop, one of the only ones uh, that existed at the time in Los Angeles. And I... I just, you know, I just became really interested in it because it was, it was like a miracle to me that there was something out there that could get me off of inhaling cigarette smoke so quickly and seamlessly and had flavors that I liked, like coffee and vanilla and creamy stuff. And it just was, it was fantastic. I was so enthused. And, um... I joined um, the e-cigarette forum, ECF, mm-hmm. and I st- and I just I dove in head first, and I made a bunch of you know forum friends and hung out there and just learned and learned and learned, and then I saw that there was this whole subculture of people that were I I had to learn what mods were I had to learn what rebuildables were and those things actually existed but they were a I mean a real niche part of the Yeah industry. wasn't it like two kids in England or a father and son no, well, pair in England that took a flashlight and You know like modders like um like Imeo the you know that 
does all the GG stuff, the Golden Greek. I mean, the, all that stuff was was out, and and it was really hard to find um, battery tube mods. But you know, the the technology was just starting. They were collector items. Um, the Caravella was already out, and there were collectors out there that were doing these things. But the but rebuildables for the most part really weren't uh, in the forefront. They people were throwing cartomizers on them and pulling the pulling the filler out of cardos, you know, and we're talking about like the lowest resistance a cartomizer was at those times were like two ohms mm -hmm. and pulling filler out of cardos and it just exposing the coil and direct dripping into them. And then and then people like Cisco were, you know, started making these drip atomizers that um there weren't rebuildable but you could direct drip into them and i mean you look on youtube and see the whole history of uh of vaping but it was fascinating to me and i wanted a better vape i mean it was all about chasing a more efficient way of of getting nicotine and and a more satisfying vape uh, something that could mimic the experience that I had with cigarettes um, and that you know it just took me on my journey so how do you then get from right you get, went from cigarette smoker to right. e-cig user to vapor right yeah and sounds like it became more of a hobby very as, much so and then so how do you go from being a hobbyist to making a great line of juice well uh, as a hobbyist, you know, and uh, anyone that has a passion for a hobby knows that it can become an expensive endeavor, and it, and it was just that I was. Collecting. How much do you think you've spent? I can I couldn't. I couldn't even take fathom. a guess. You know what's funny is I've spent far less in the la since I've started Ragtime Vapor. Far less in the last year since Ragtime Vapor's been in business. And is that than, because you're just making your own juice and you're not spending money on juice, or you're talking about you're no, you're not buying mods? I'm not like buying. Yeah, I'm not really buying a lot of mods, and I'm not really a collector of stuff, and I'm I'm satisfied with my vape, and I I just don't chase after that whole thing, and um you know now it's uh, my passion became my my job, mm -hmm. and. I'm really, really stoked about that, and so I don't have to chase it anymore. And I think that I've just settled into it. Um, but in that that first like year and a half that I was vaping, gosh, I was spending. I must have been spending twice as much on gear than I was on cigarettes. I think I easily spent five or six thousand dollars my yeah. first year vaping. Yeah, yeah, like, and probably you know ten or fifteen all right. in at this point. Right, but. Yeah, I, I, the first your first year of really doing it as a hobby. It wasn't for the money. It's expensive. Yeah, it it can be very expensive. Is vaping beauty. too? I don't mean I'm jumping all over. Yeah, the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is vaping too expensive, David? It sure it, it sure can be. Very it sure can be. I agree. Like, for when you think about what it actually takes to make the mod, it's not much. But you also have to realize like development time. But I feel like it's something that's so beneficial for so many people and also like despite the rapid growth the fact that it is such a niche i feel like we shouldn't be gouging each other you yeah know? so i mean i don't want to because I, I do i want to i want you to tell us how you went from kind of hobbyist to i'm, to, I'm right at that i'm i'm around the corner but, but you're gonna like make I, a point today yeah. i literally i don't know if we can see this on camera but i bought the calvert right mm -hmm. from monarchy Mona, monarchy i don't know how you would pronounce that it's exactly the way you pronounce it monarchy Monarchy? Yeah. It's however sure. I said it. Absolutely. The last time I was in this studio. You spend the enough, you gotta call it whatever you want. Apricot, apricot. Okay. <laughs> so 150 bucks, right? For a stainless steel tube, a threaded top cap, a magnet, and a bottom cap. Right? That's essentially all this. It doesn't come with a battery. Yeah. Came in a little velveteen pouch that yeah. I'm sure cost a dollar or two. 150 bucks, and I'm pretty sure I got a hookup. Is that too much? Right, paired with an atomizer, or $75 atomizer, you know, I'm into the $225 range without a drip tip, without a battery, without a charger, without juice. Am I insane? Meriwether, you want to take that one? Because I probably have two And not just me, it. yes, I'm insane. But like as the everyday <laughs> vapor, right? Is that is that an insane thing to ask of a person 
Well, I think it's a bit insane, but then you look at other stuff like custom cars, you look at sound systems, you look at any hobby. Like, right, but this do was I just... want to vape a custom car? Like, you know, I get it. Like, <laughs> there's a certain percentage of people out there that, you know, the regular Honda Acura isn't right for them. But does does every vapor need a custom car? Or do they just need something that's good enough to get them to the right experience vaping? Well, I feel like there is stuff out there that gives you the quality that's going to get you from A to B. You know, your Toyota Prius, you know, A to B, efficient, good. And then you have like, you know, your Bugatti, you know, like they're different, you know. But I think um, where we need to see more development is in that mid level you know and creating price points that is more that are more affordable for the everyday vapor and like, you know I, I i think that we are seeing that and that's happening and the i think the short answer to your question is no it's not too much because there's an alternative there there are cheaper alternatives for everyone mm -hmm. so if like for instance you know we were we were when I came in here and I, I was like, oh yeah, I got, I got this, uh, this clone mod and it was 35 bucks. And then this is, uh, and then this billow tank was another 35 bucks. And so this whole thing is like 70 bucks retail. Right. Right. And I, if I shopped around or I, you know, I asked some of my vendor friends, whatever, I probably could have gone at, at wholesale, but you know, I, I'm a consumer. So, for retail, it's like seventy bucks for a for something that performs as well, if not better, than a lot of the stuff that costs extraordinary dolores out there, right? Yeah. And then the other mod I bought, I brought with me is um, the very first um, considered high end mod that I that I purchased, uh, which was a Chiyu in 2013. And when I first bought this, I mean, this thing was in I mean such high demand. I think I paid like $275 for it. Mm -hmm. And um, and I haven't used it uh, but for this last week because I got a new switch for it. But I haven't used it in like a year and a half. And oh, that's I have a yeah. toolbox. Yeah, full of stuff you haven't used. Like it's a nice toolbox. Right. But I, I have literally like a giant box with a bunch of drawers. Yeah, And it's, it's awesome. filled with I've mods. I've seen that. But it's a machinist tool, toolbox. It is. Yeah. Uh, and it's vintage and you know the box is sometimes nicer than the stuff that's inside of it but exactly. you know it's filled with mods and right. i can really only you know at best double fist and use two of them at the mm -hmm. same time yeah um okay so jumping around again right yeah i want to i want to i back to me yeah tell me tell me how you go how We're, the hell we did talk I about start pricing, pricing right yeah how did Where you was get the to aha moment right okay so so uh, when I was on the forums and I was spending, you know, I was spending a, just a crap ton of money on liquids and I had like my, you know, it was really hard back then. There were not any connoisseur brand e-liquids. There were none to be found. There were a few decent e-liquids you could find online from people that were, you know, selling them online only. You couldn't find them in any shops. I mean, there weren't many shops around what were those first brands um illusion out of um out of uh, michigan and uh heather's heavenly vapes which i think uh where are they located uh, i won't even uh remember now but I'm not sure it matters but it and both are still around both still sell direct from their uh from their sites online and they're still, and I still consider both those companies very good. Um, uh, they both make uh, their own tobacco extractions, and they've got some extraordinary tobaccos, which is one of the things that I was into early on in my vaping career. Um, but those were actually the, the two that I, I gravitated to, and I found out about them through this, through the e-cigarette forum. Through ECF. Yeah. And I became uh, I became sort of a fanboy of those you know those juice companies, and I bought and I started just buying flavors and flavors and flavors. But I was spending a ton of money, and I had um, I just I had these boxes just full of you know I probably had fifteen flavors from each company, so I had thirty different 
flavors to choose from. And then I realized that I was really only vaping maybe two or three on a regular basis. My palate started to hone in mm -hmm. on what worked for me. You found what we refer to as the all day vape. I found all day vape. Okay. And I didn't know what that was, but on ECF, they also have some sub forums for DIYers, for do it yourself, make your own e liquid. And I started to investigate that because my background was um, in cooking. I went to culinary school when I was in my 20s. I learned how to cook. My passion was in cooking. I worked in restaurants my whole life. You know, I have, you know, 20 plus years experience in, in restaurants and I consider myself a foodie. And, it, you know, so really, I. I always saw manufacturing e-liquid as cooking. It was just, that's how I pictured it. So we're going to your house after this for dinner and you're going to serve us juice. Certainly. E-liquid. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, I, I learned the basics, which is, which is pretty simple. You've got your flavoring. You've got uh, flavor carriers like glycerin and uh, propylene glycol and you've got concentrated nicotine. And with those, blending those four elements basically makes e-liquid. Do you make any like colossal mistakes early on? Oh yeah, Like and way I too much do. nicotine and... Well, not, you know, I mean, nicotine safety is one of the, one of the things that I learned about very early because I didn't want to overdose and poison myself with nicotine. Because, um, you know, working with highly concentrated nicotine um, can be risky. So you don't, you definitely don't want to be inhaling hundred milligram, you know, yeah, nicotine that sounds or, bad. or even 50 milligram. Yeah. It also sounds bad. Yeah. yeah. Pretty bad. And, uh, so I, you know, I, I learned, you know, handling safety and I just, you know, it, really everything that I needed to know was on ECF, um, looked up and found, uh, flavor providers, which, you know, the flavorings that we use greatly in, in our industry are flavors that were created for the food and beverage industry. So FDA approved flavorings that you would find to make flavored teas or sodas or juices. or And then that's it. That's how I learned how to the basics of making e-liquid. I started with one flavor. How do I make strawberry so strawberry did my mix had my calculator worked out the math for the for the right nicotine level and i made strawberry and now i got comfortable with that and i moved in okay how do i make strawberry cookie and now you're working with two flavors and um you jump ahead six months later and i'm making Flavors that, you know, had maybe four or five or six different flavorings in them. And they were a bit more complex. So now you're back to being a chef. Now I'm back. Now I'm doing what I always like to do. And I, I introduced some of my smoker friends to vaping during this period of time. And I was, I was making my own e-liquid. And the stuff that I was making for myself, for my palate, was better than the stuff that I was buying. Um, not all, you know, not all the stuff that I was buying, but I was happier paying a few bucks rather than, you know, 15 bucks for a 30 mil bottle, um, at that time. And 15 bucks for a 30 mil bottle. Yeah. I mean, boy, the, how times have changed. I know. Well, yeah. I mean, the the real high end e-liquids hadn't really evolved yet. So, you know, you, you could find, you know, the, the stuff that was, uh, custom made was about you know fifteen to seventeen dollars for a thirty mil bottle. Okay. Yeah. Um, the real expensive stuff was Halo, and that was nineteen dollars a bottle. At wow. That time. So that was like what? I'm not gonna pay nineteen dollars a bottle. And now you know it's everything's like twenty two to twenty five dollars a yep. bottle. So um, I became adept at making flavors. And I had a few in my arsenal that I was vaping, that I, I made my own all day vape. And I started giving them to my friends who I turned on to vaping and they loved them so much. So I went six months 
uh, just vaping my own stuff. After a while, I was just so into it, and I, I had such a passion for what I was doing. It was really my wife, Ellen. And we call her Sweet Smelling. Okay. We want to get into, <laughs> you want to get into that now? Uh, sure, if you want. Smell her neck one of these days. Am I, am I sanctioned it's to do so? It's all about the neck. Because I'm all about smelling some married lady's neck, but I want to make sure her husband's okay with it. I know for a fact. Potentially watching from a dark I corner. I know without a shadow of a doubt, she mm. would absolutely let Meriwether smell her neck. Who well, says I haven't already? You probably have. But that's, she gives you good know, hugs. That's like lady she on does. lady neck smelling. That's, you yeah. Know, that, I don't think that's harmful. I th I think you've got a good shot, Josh. Okay. All right. Absolutely. All right. Cool. But that's why we call her sweet smell. So so okay. So you were a chef, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You uh you started you know you wanted to quit smoking. You yep. got into the e cigs. Yeah. You switched over to vaping. Yeah. Became a hobby. Now you're back to being a chef. Yeah. And then sweet smell and Ellen says she turns to me and says, "Look, you know you're doing this all the time. I had set up like a little mini lab in a corner of our place and." I was mixing juice and she said, you know, why don't we, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this for a living? Like, why don't you create a company? And it was right when, you know, I mean, when we created Ragtime Vapor, it was right when everything exploded with e-liquid companies. Mm -hmm. Like when Ragtime launched, I think we launched with, 50 other e-liquid companies like do you everybody... sit there and look at the industry and like oh shit well you know there was there was something that was like god if we had done this a year before or even six months before things might be a little bit different but that's all you know that's all money talk mm -hmm. and i didn't i didn't get into this for the money and there are there are plenty of people that get into this for the money and there's money to be made and that's a valid reason to get into the e-liquid business I've, i don't knock anybody for trying to um you know get a basket of eggs because there's a lot of eggs to go around but can you be do you think you can be successful in this industry if you just come into it for the desire for money as opposed to the passion for the hobby or the passion for the juice or the passion for the culinary side of things yeah, I think you can, actually. I think, you know, you, you can stumble upon uh, lightning in a bottle and, uh, you know, you come out with the, with the right flavor at the right time with the right name and it doesn't even have to be all that great and you don't have to know a whole lot of business sense. It's just going to fly off the shelves and you're going to make a, a crap ton of money in a short period of time. Does that mean you're going to have longevity? Not necessarily, but we'll know. You know, we won't know until that's played out. It's kind um, of the beauty. Sorry to interrupt, no, it's okay. but it's kind of the beauty of our industry is you're you're watching it unfold. Right. Exactly. You know, I just told someone was like, well, you know, we we really like that you're you know you're able to spot trends, and I was like, well, I'm glad it looks that way right. because internally we're all kind of looking at each other like, well, is is this the next great thing? Right. And sometimes it's a gamble. Right. Yeah. Sometimes brands are a gamble. Sometimes products are a gamble. Sorry, sorry, Mary. What were you going to say? Oh, what I was going to say is with David's flavors, those are flavors that I consistently go back to. So even if they're not like the hot girl that week, right? Like you know, you have Hella Blue that like any day of the week, any month. Right. That's a blueberry scone flavor, which I'm sure you'll get into. But with David's flavor, because he has the chef background because he came through this so organically it's stuff that i'm going to keep going back to which i think is the balance in the industry is what's hot now and what's going to have the longevity like you said well i'll go i'll go into the the concept of of what we wanted as ragtime vapor and the sort and, of the and market if you that we don't mind tell us why ragtime okay well um where where did so you we, get the name from? We made the decision. Okay, yes, we're gonna let's do this. You know, it was this. You know, it was uh, not this past summer, but the summer before. I'm like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do this thing. It was before the first ECC, and now it's all now it's about branding. Now you've got to create a brand, and I I knew it. I'm look. I never went to business school. I'm I knew nothing about business and everything that I know about business I'm learning as I go but I knew intuitively that 
branding is important. And if you take uh, if you take e-liquid companies like the standard, okay, and they were like one of the first kids on the block, the first like big boys on the block to go gangbuster sales, and they had that bottle. They mm-hmm. had that brilliant square bottle with that label that was different from ev- everyone else. And I would say what made that juice company fly was their brand. And shelf appeal? Like how it looked sitting I mean, up on the shelf? I mean, there was nothing like it. It was brilliant. And now I don't know if they planned it to be that way or if it was just like hey let's just be different and it just took off but that's the effect that branding can have on a market and and on a market that quickly became saturated so i didn't want to spend months and months and months trying to reinvent the wheel i'm not that creative but i wanted to definitely create something specific so then it's about the name the name came from, uh, you know, it was basically based on all the regulations, the looming regulations, the FDA and local regulations that have been like hanging over our heads for, you know, the last few years. And um, and it felt like the Prohibition era, you know, a throwback to the Prohibition era of the 1920s and 30s. And that was the foundation of our concept. We wanted to... We wanted our concept to reflect the Prohibition era of the 20s and 30s. And then we were like, okay, well, do we want to call ourselves Prohibition Vapor? And I thought it sounded a little too negative. I didn't want Prohibition to be the name. And then I, and we were almost going to call it Speakeasy Vapor. And that was one of the contenders. And what was another one? Uh, another one was... Um, bootleg and mind you all of the names i just said like prohibition bootleg speakeasy they all became e-liquid companies Mm -hmm. so they all exist but they didn't when we were talking about these names right so it's a good thing we didn't choose those because those were you know someone else was destined to do that but what what we chose was the the music genre of that era which is ragtime music, which right. is a precursor to jazz. And I thought that ragtime music was something that was celebratory, something that was a party that has culture and it has a story behind it, but it still has its foot in the Prohibition era. So ragtime vapor, that's, w- that's what we decided. And I thought it sounded good. Uh, okay, so now take us through take us through the flavors yeah. uh, to, and the you know the flavor profiles and you know tell me a little bit about what was you know what you were inspired by when you made the I had already had one of the flavors that I was already vaping a lot at that time was what is now Jubilee, which is a, a mix of melons with a little bit of cucumber and. At that time, when I when I was doing that, there may have been one other company that I saw mixing cucumber with melon. And of course, by the time we launched, there might have been half a dozen that were actually doing cucumber with melon, and there were dozens of melon flavors. But Jubilee is one of uh, one of our, and and it happens to be our simplest flavor. So I already had that in my back pocket. It's a mix of um, summer melons, cantaloupe, honeydew, watermelon, and uh, a little bit of citrus, and you've got some creaminess, but it's in a back note, very back note. And, you've taken me back now to my grandmother. You know, right. like here, have a bowl of melon. Right. Yeah. And then the and the cucumber that we use is like it, it's almost undetectable. Some people are like, "Oh my god, that's cucumber," and some people say they can't taste it at all. Interesting. And that's exactly how I wanted to make it. Um, it's it should be complementary to the melons, but it shouldn't be the first thing you taste, and it shouldn't overpower because it can be overpowering. So yeah. that was that's uh, jubilee. That's what we call. Oh, by the by the way, all the names of the flavors that uh, are from 
that era too. They're, they're from the twenties and thirties or slang from the twenties and thirties with exception of honky tonk, which I'll get into now. Honky tonk, I think was actually uh, slang that came in the forties, but it, it fit. So okay. honky tonk was one of the, one of the e-liquids that I used to make for myself to vape was this banana nut bread. And I constructed a banana nut bread uh, flavor that was, awesome it was out of this world and i didn't necessarily i don't know i just thought i didn't want to just put a banana nut bread out there because to i don't know to me it just seemed like too simple like there were if you went on um on e-commerce sites and looked up bakery vapes out there like banana nut bread was being sold in just about every it had been done it had been done quite a bit and i thought that mine was the best that i had tried but i wanted something special so i was messing around with the banana nut recipe and how how i could make it a little different and i thought okay well the flavors that i was tasting i thought could complement tobacco really nice and i knew that i wanted to do we started with four flavors and i knew that with just four flavors, we wanted it to have a broad spectrum. So we wanted to have a fruit, a tobacco, and um, and a bakery, and maybe two bakeries. And um, so that was my foray into blending tobaccos. So I started playing tobacco in the banana nut bread recipe that I had, and I accidentally added i thought i was adding another tobacco and i accidentally added this like really super concentrated dried fruit and i smell i mean i smelled it right away it smelled like what did i just do and i made it i was making a big bottle because what i was on to was really good and i want to make a big bottle for myself it's a 60 milliliter bottle and i cursed out loud and i said ah, i made a mistake and Sure, that's exactly what you said. That's that exactly was your cursing. What I said, ah, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. I made a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> and um, and Ellen said, "Well, you should try it," because I was like deep into R and D, and we we were pressured, you know, because we had we had started the LLC, we had our name, uh, you know, the company, and we knew that we wanted to launch. You know, this is at this time we're talking um, September October of uh, twenty thirteen. And we were slated to launch our product January of 2014. So we were under pressure. Like we needed to get stuff done. So she says, so Ellen says, try it. And I'm like, okay, but this is going to suck balls because it smells like, I can say balls, right? Uh, you can say whatever you want. And uh, I put it in a, I was using the HH357. Uh, Dripping atomizer. You okay. remember those? Yeah, I do. And uh, and that's what I I, would ha I bought like 10 of them. And I would use them to test. And I tried it. And it, complete, it completely changed the flavor profile, what I was doing. Um, that little happy accident with the, with the concentrated dried fruit that I was using. And I thought, oh, man. Now we're on to something that nobody's going to be able to clone because that's another thing that you know you're concerned about you're you know creating a, a e-liquid company you don't necessarily want to create a flavor that's easily cloned by Do you find people else. trying to clone your flavors i well i haven't come across it but i'm not all that concerned because okay. really because my flavors are really so complex with exception of jubilee that i had mentioned before that's actually a pretty simple flavor but the other flavors that i do Conceptually, they're not complicated, but the recipes are so, they're really, really complicated. So good luck if you're trying to. Yeah, good to, luck. Yeah. I mean, you might come close and good and great. I mean, come close and make your own stuff. Maybe you'll be the next big brand of e-liquid companies. I, I encourage that fully, but. You know, so, okay. So yeah. that was 23 Skidoo and then Honky Tonk. Right? Uh, that, no, that was uh, Jubilee. Honky or Tonk. Ju Jubilee. Honky Speak. Tonk became the, became the, the tobacco. Okay. Uh, which Ellen, my wife, who was never a smoker, she still vapes. She vapes zero milligram of Honky Tonk all the time. So I knew, okay, I'm onto that. 
then I was working on a custard. The custard thing was, uh, that was an enigma to me. There were some real fad custards out there. Uh, you know, everybody was talking at that time. Everyone was trying to get their hands on Grant's vanilla custard, which is out of the UK. And, uh, there were a few out here and I bought a few of these custards that everyone was talking about and I could not vape them. I just thought they just take to me, they tasted like puke. Like a lot there was of them a, have that kind of spice to them as well that I don't get with 20. You know I don't how, like the custards can be kind of spicy, but yours is like a real custard. Like it doesn't taste like real custard. A lot of them, but yours does. Right. Right. And, and I, the thing there was a, when I say puke, I mean, there was actually like, for some reason, there's, um, there's a flit and I know what it is now. And like, I know the flavor that's used to, to make it. And I actually use some of it in my juice, but it's like, you just buy that from the flavor house. It's like labeled puke and you, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I label it puke just okay. so I don't use too much of it, but that would uh, not be a good oops. <laughs> no, but doing you know, too much of that. What's funny is that it's it's almost a ne it's an absolutely necessary component to make a custard, but if that's the only component that you use, it just to me it tastes like just sour eggs. Mm -hmm. You know, it just tastes not. It just doesn't. It's not appealing. It's all mouthfeel. Uh, you were talking about shapes. That you know, I, I refer to that as mouthfeel. So it it was all like unctuous and kind of real coated the mouth, and it just tasted very eggy and 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 had this sourness to it, and that was it. It was very one layered, and I didn't like it, and I didn't like the custards out there. So I just went on a venture to create a custard that I liked a lot, and that took forever. It took months to do that, and I was adding. I mean, we talk about layering. I was layering just flavor after flavor after flavor. And you talk about like creams. I would take three different creams and three different Bavarian creams and four different custards and spice, bakery spices and adding them and, and, and crusts and breads and cookies and like in the most minuscule percentages and blending them together. And that's how what I call 23 Skidoo is our custard flavor. So that's what I did to build that. Okay. And I'm, I'm vaping it today. I've been vaping it since I created it. That's my all, all day vape. I can't believe that I'm still vaping something after, you know, a, ye a year plus of after creating. It must it. be pretty good if you're not sick of it by now. Well, I think it is. Right. You know, and my and this is another thing. Like when I created the company, I was like, not everybody's going to love my juice. People, some people are going to hate my juice. I remember you telling me that when I first met you, which I thought was yeah. kind of endearing about you, because most people are like, my juice is so awesome. No, I mean, look, the, it's impossible. It's like, you know, it's like creating music or art or whatever. You're going to, you know, the taste is subjective, but that's the truth. That's the bottom line. I know that people that not everyone is going to love what I make, but if I really love what I make, then my belief is enough people will also feel that same way to have a successful e-liquid company. And that, and then I just have to focus on what I really like. And there's other elements to that. I have to pay attention to what's out there too, but that's, that's kind of how I, I do my, so okay so that's the so three of the five that's the three of the five and then uh, so those are the three of the four we started with and then the fourth was what we call jim dandy which is apple pie and i just set out to make the most authentic apple pie that i could do and uh i did the same thing with with jim dandy that i do with that i did with the 23 skidoo i just kept layering and layering and layering um and you know, like if I if I was to make apple juice, like in the real world, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't just use as opposed to vape life. The vape, yeah, the, in the, the vape world, in the ether of vape cloudness. So you're not like making juices in some video game where you're making <laughs> virtual juices, right? That someone should do that. Someone should make the vaping MMORPG. It'll happen. Can you get on that? <laughs> he's on it right now. 
Um, Chris, our engineer. Okay, everyone. so if I were if if I wanted a glass of apple juice to drink, okay. right? For my taste, I'm not going to just buy, you know, three Granny Smith apples or three delicious red apples and juice them and drink it. That's going to be good. But what I want to do is, well, what happens if I take, you know, a Granny Smith, a delicious red, a golden apple and a honey crisp don't forget the fuji and the gala and the fuji and a gala and a pink lady and mix them all together there's an apple called a pink lady there is washington where i'm from number one exporter of apples it gets apples go deep all right like, welcome to the apple cast everyone <laughs> Not apples, to be confused man. with your computer. Um, <laughs> so that that's my concept of layering. So if I want to create um, a custard, I'm not going to just do custard flavor and maybe add some cream or some butter and be done with it. I'm going to take five custards from five different companies and I'm going to take four creams from four different companies and blend them all together and experiment that way and and the end result is this layered taste so that when you vape it you you just it's just a, it's a more of a food experience for me so that's what i did with jim dandy okay and jim dandy is um i think it's great i mean it's just it's like eating an apple pie mm-hmm. it reminds me of my far- favorite part of apple pie is like the next day when you take that crust mm-hmm. at the bottom when it's soaked up all the juices yep. from the apple and it's just like perfection. It's like layered, but it's super cohesive. Right. And that's the best part. And that's what I get out of Jim Dandy. And that's great that you said that because that was one of the things that I was after, which was that sog- that part of the crust that's soggy that has that soaked in. Like, how do you mimic that? You did. And I, I purposely <laughs> tried to do that, and I found a flavor element that, I mean, you wouldn't believe me if, like, I tell Foggy you Foggy apple pie flavor yeah, base. It's like... You keep that on the shelf right next to the bottle of puke. <laughs> <Right>. Okay. <laughs> It's trying to you know, visually imagine what the lab is like. But I was like, when I made it, I was like, oh my God, this this one flavor that, that as a standalone flavor, you would never think, well, let's put that in apple pie. But I put that in the apple pie, and I was like, wow, that gives an illusion of that quality of crust. Okay. And so... So those are your original four. Yeah, and then after a few months of being out, then uh, one of the challenges was um, berries. Uh, dark berries are really were really hard to work with. You know, people dark are getting berries. dark berries like blackberry, boysenberry, blueberry. You get an alcoholic taste to a lot of. Them. I feel like you just that... got racist on berries. <laughs> Did that just happen? It's a little racy. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you took it from racist to racy. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's good that's... spin. Yeah. Okay. So well, then... I com- I combined so... racist and rapey. <laughs> and I came out with racy. It's funny when we first launched craft vapery. I was kind of raised my hand and was like, does anyone think the name sounds like rapery? (laughs) And everyone just kind of looked at me like I was the weird one. And I guess I was because no one else saw it that way. And so kind of no cool, no more objections. And then, you know, fast forward almost a year. And my best friend literally says to me not too long ago, he's like, sounds a little rapery. <laughs> so, not our intention, but I get it. And uh and yeah. So okay. So uh so so then yeah. Flavor so number 5. Flavor number 5. So at the time, uh one of the biggest challenges in, that I saw in the market was creating a blueberry. For me it was blueberry. It was so difficult to work with honing in the right just getting the right flavor i tried to do you know through all this time that i was now a juice maker i couldn't make a good blueberry berry flavor to save my life it all it it either tasted like alcohol or like flowers or like perfume or i mean it was just it's a really volatile flavor and difficult to work with and i just kept at it i just kept at it I don't know. I just didn't give up. And that became what's now Hullabaloo, which is neck and neck with 23 Skidoo is our biggest seller. Okay. So, yeah, it's a, it's a blueberry scone. So I didn't want to do anything like super sweet. I didn't want to do like a cake 
blueberry and i know like super sweet is really popular like people like their they're really... but i feel like people tire of the super sweet right. flavors faster like they initially love it right and then i feel like over time they get to a point where it's like yeah but it's and then it's universally they always say yeah it's just a little too sweet well, you're more apt to get vapors tongue i feel with oversaturated flavors yeah. that like are with sweet comes oversaturation. I, you know, it, it's just a matter of preference. I did not want our flavors to be overly sweet, so I use very, very little sweetener. Most of the sweetness is really just from the flavorings themselves, and I will add a little bit of sucralose to some of the flavors just to bring out some of the inherent sweetness, but far less than I find in. So are you still at it? Are you still, do you still, you now you go to the, you go to the, the job now every day, right? Yeah. And you get to be a chef there, but is it more about fulfilling orders on the five flavors that you've got? Or are mm -hmm. you still in the lab kind of tinkering and layering and coming up with flavor number six? I haven't spent time in the lab in a while. And, and I had promised myself uh, during the holidays that come January, I was going to go back into R and D and come up with my next, uh, two flavors. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I didn't really want to be an e-liquid company that had like 10 flavors. And what, a, what a lot of companies will do is they'll come out with five or six or seven and they'll stop there and then they'll come out with a second company. And of course I don't want to have a second company until, until our first company is either hugely successful um, or f fails miserably. I mean, and we're right in the middle of that. I don't <laughs> so, see you guys failing. Like our e-commerce says otherwise. People no, love your we're, stuff. We are, we're a successful brand and we're recognized. And, um, but we, I want more from what we have. And I feel a sneeze coming in. I'm, I'm there at the light. It, that doesn't work for me. No, no, it does. No, right now I'm just getting angry because I'm getting that... that You get that tingle up in your sinuses. Oh, it's and... going right now. It's like in my eyeball right now. Okay, that's Maybe fair. Maybe I'll have a Meriwether sneeze. Oh. If I do this, it'll just go away. <laughs> Yeah, they're uh, real. Meriwether sneezes and it's quite, it's like right out of like a 1940s cartoon. I can't wait. You gonna um, do that tonight? You can't do it on she command. Can Dust, hay, trees, and mold. Get them around and I'll start sneezing. Nice. Um, okay. So that's an awesome story. Yeah. Um, and, I know. And, you know, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to end up more on the successful side than on the failure side. You know, Meriwether's right. Your, your juice does I'm sell very well I mean, I'm us, thrilled. So. You know what's funny is, like like I said, I'm, I am I didn't get into this for money. Now it's a company that I, that I have to sustain. I do spend most of my time... Um, filling orders, communicating with accounts that we have, resellers, and trying to get more resellers. And, you know, it's a business. Now it's, now it's, there is a lot of its work and mm -hmm. it's not so much the creative end. And, and I'd like to spend more time being creative, but that's what, you know, I hire employees to take some of the load off of what I do and then I can spend more time in development. But that's what I'm, I'm going to go in and do some development and, do a couple new flavors that will be under ragtime brand. And, um, and maybe we'll call it done after seven max. I think an odd number is a good number. And okay. uh, which is funny because um, I always prefer even numbers. So do you? Yeah. In the, in the, in the culinary it world, just means we can go gambling together. Like with oh, plating excellent. things. Yeah. I yes. don't know. I think of like Japanese floral arrangements, like plating things, odd numbers. Yes, yeah. When you when you must plate, be a culinary thing. Yeah, in culinary. Because I just have OCD, plating. and that makes me want everything to be even numbers. Right. But who right, said right. even's right? I did. Okay, then and you're then, right. Yeah. Then okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, I want to I want to segue just a little bit. So you earlier to said you were you were vaping on a clone. Mm -hmm. You, you, uh, first off, what is everyone vaping on here? What are you vaping on? Over I have the Segeli 100 watt plus rip and dip sticker added. And then I had the standard functions 26, 650 atomizer, which has a huge deck to build on. It's a behemoth, probably not very ladylike, but I'm not always ladylike. Okay. That's fair. And okay. Now tell me about this, uh, this clone device you have, and then I'm going to ask you about clones. Okay. Uh, this is the simple mod clone. 
Uh, and on top of it is the billow tank. Were you able to find one of the rubber coated ones? Yeah, that's what. It, I mean, uh, yeah, it's like rubberized. I kind of no. wish every mod came with that's, a rubber coated option. That's really why I got it. Yeah, that's. I mean, it, I, I I really liked it, and I didn't get it for any other reason for that. Yeah, hold, you got to hold it up oh, for the camera. Yeah, um, I didn't see the so, camera. So okay, so I you buy clones. Put it right in between the right? two, so you can um, see. You, and it does, and it actually has though. It says uh, SMPL, which is you know the, the mod that it's cloned after, but it also has the manufacturer that makes the clone a mod. Right. So then technically, it's not a one-to-one -one clone if not, they put their own brand right, on it. Right. Uh, how do you feel about? And clones? I don't know if Simple Mod uh, or if the Simple Simples do not come with a don't rubber have coating. this. Yeah. You know, so, and they should. So if they're listening, which you can't imagine yeah. they are. Uh, but if they are, and you the billow make... tank is an original mod, is I mean, an original tank mm -hmm. uh, that was created by um, a joint venture between e -Sigity. I think they're out of they're an online shop out of Hawaii, okay. and um, and uh, who is it? It's one of the like one of the like the Chinese big Chinese clone manufacturers, uh, EH Pro. And they they like got together and made this uh, dual coil rebuildable tank, which is a fantastic tank. Okay. Little leaky. I fixed it up. Which so you, you bought things. a thing and then you took it out of the box and then you had to take the thing and, and had put it on your workbench and fix it. And fix it, which is one of the things that we as uh, as vapors tend to do, especially with rebuildables. Yeah. So um, you find you find bucks. buying clones is. Uh, do you, do you have issues with buying clones? Like, as someone who makes a product mm -hmm. in this industry, and we talked earlier about, you know, it wouldn't be so easy to rip off your flavors, but right. does it bother you at all that, you know, there's someone went out and worked really hard to develop that the first time, and then someone in, you know, some other country just decided to knock it off? It bothers me. Uh, well, it definitely bothers me when you steal uh, trademarks. Yep. Um, that that's really you know when it comes to design it's really tough and i and look modders are artists and i get it and there are there are and some more than others but it's it's the thing that bothered me most about the whole clone thing that happened in the last 12 months uh were taking the the trademark symbols and putting them on devices and then having resellers sell them as the full price mods and i saw that happen right now that's just an outright ripoff right yeah and yeah. i saw that happening a lot it's funny i get you know every day i get a ton of emails from uh you know from clone companies right. unsolicited right. and uh i often will forward them to the original manufacturer of the product and be right. like oh i didn't realize you guys made a right you know giggle Right. Um, some of them appreciate that, and some of them get really upset. And I get it. But it's, yeah. I think of it kind of like purses. You know, like you have Canal Street. Like if it's something like that where the company that's cloning it is taking ownership for it, for it saying this is our rendition of this, mm -hmm. and it's still like a quality product, okay, you go get a shoddy purse that falls apart like a week later and they're mm -hmm. putting the exact logo on it and not even like owning the clonage right you know i feel like there's like a difference between that you know like creating something affordable that everyone can afford simple design and like taking ownership of it i think that's different from like you know i remember when kings were really big mm -hmm. and everyone just like slapped just like a shoddy king on the front and they're like oh king made mod. something right you know, right. and much it's to like the, Surefire's chagrin, um, right? You know, they're not so happy about that. It's always funny when you're at a show, and the first party manufacturer, like at ECC or you know one of the vaping conventions, and the first party manufacturer is on one side of the show, and then the cloner is on the other side of right, the show. Right, exactly. And eventually, they'll work their way over and be like, "Hmm, so what are you making here?" Right. Right. And I've actually seen that conversation happen with like a lawyer present, which is fascinating. Unbelievable. Um, I've seen it twice actually, and it's it's the same company that brings their lawyer to to all the events now. Wow. But it's uh you know you you I, I 
you know, I understand why they want to stem it, you know. But going back to what we talked about earlier with vaping being kind of expensive, I also understand that there's this massive need for affordable products. Right. And so, like you said earlier, I think there needs to be this middle ground. Um, and that's going to, you know, well, you know, you already see a couple things happening in the market. There are more affordable U.S. made mods out there sub $100 or around $100, but certainly under $200. Uh, so more people can afford them. You've got more affordable, like rebuildable tanks. And you have you have American companies joining with Chinese companies because... Look, right, like the Mutation X designed here exactly. in the U.S. and then manufactured by a large manufacturing base in China to keep the cost. Manufacturing Smart. is very expensive and machining is very expensive in the in the United States. Right. And so if you can and and China has miles and miles and miles of machinery and warehouses the where full that's of it. yeah, that's yeah. all that they do. And if you can um, if you can join with them and create a product together, that's I think that's really the smart thing. And you think, I think that's where vaping is going on the hardware side? Do you think that's the future? Well, I don't think that's the only future, but that's uh, that's certainly happening now, and I think that's probably going to continue. The, the stuff that's just coming out of the U.S. or just coming out of um, emerging market countries, it's going to be expensive. It's, you know, when you've got one guy or two guys that are hand making and hand turning metal, it's just, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of, it costs a lot. And if you have to make, and you're making small quantities, you're making a thousand at, at a time. Right. It's, they're going to be expensive. All right. So speaking of products that are in small batches, right? So I mentioned earlier, I've been vaping on this, uh, this Calvert here. Uh, up top here, I've got the Derringer RDA, um, which as of right now, I think is one of the hottest RDAs that are out there. Have very, you used it? I have not. It's very, very Can you see that? good yeah, looking. That nice? Very there, good there. looking. Uh, it's very good looking. It's also pretty powerful. Meriwether, you're also using one. And so I think in every craft cast, we want to do like a mini hardware review. So you and I have both you've been using the product now for about a week. week and no a half. more. We got ours before. Christmas? I stopped being able to tell time after my son was born. That's why you have me. <laughs> um, I enjoyed the pictures and the videos of your son. He crawled today. He did. My son I just crawled thought we put that out there. The first time. Uh, nice. Big milestone event. Nothing else in my life is as important as watching him grow and develop. So, yes. Uh, young baby crane, now mobile. Um, Meriwether is still keeping track of time. Yeah, so you're keeping track of time. Okay, so the Derringer Atomizer. So first off, it's tiny. Yeah, that's... Right? Uh, shorter than a penny on its edge, which is, you know, really, really impressive. Do we want to pull it off the mod? Because uh, it kind of blends. I don't know if that's a thing. Is that hybrid connected? or is This it... is hybrid connected okay. to the, the Calvert here. Just so we can show yeah. how tiny it is. What kind of threading does it have? I mean, oh. that is cute. Is that like, that looks almost like uh, this. It's a standard 510 thread. Uh, right. I'm going to leave it on the mod because I can't get the hybrid cap off. Uh, it has an inner sleeve here. You can see that. Inner sleeve here with adjustable airflow. Uh, so there's a setup for dual coils and then a setup for single coil here. Um, so you can do it. There are uh, slots in the top cap here. Side, so you can configure it. Uh, pretty big build area. And also on the pins, there's a lot of space. Yeah, there. nice big yeah. holes in the pins. So I felt like for a dual coil build, I wasn't yeah. trying to really fit. I've got a 26 gauge seven wrap in here. And he'll make it fit. Um, which is coming out to about 0 0.3, 0 0.35. And uh, a gold plated uh, copper center post. I've heard uh, in version two, they're gonna go to stainless steel. Some people were complaining about the copper. Um, I have to say for its size, it's really an impressive atomizer. Um, you know, I really like the adjustable airflow, although I tend to be a wide open kind of guy. Um, I really, really like that, uh, <clears throat> that the way that they've machined the airflow on it, it's sort of designed to really get around your coil. Yeah. For me, I like 
clouds to an extent, you know, I have this, but also on this, I have a Clapton. So flavor is what's really important to me in the end. Mm -hmm. I like clouds because they're fun, you know, but flavor is really important. This atomizer has great flavor, like what you were saying, getting the air fully around, allowing the juice to fully bloom into what it can be, you know, like you can have great flavor. And if you don't have it on a good atomizer, you don't have it on a good build doesn't really matter and with this atomizer you're getting the best of both worlds and it's small and adorable it makes the girls go ooh so now uh, a couple other things about the mod um and get into some of the things that i you know don't necessarily love about it i don't know if we can see that on the camera uh there are very short throw screws that actually sink all the way down into the post and you need a little allen key which they provide uh, a little hex key in order to use it however i have to say if you lose that hex key yeah when you we... are kind of screwed kind of screwed i we got ours like fresh off the press i ours were actually prototypes you know we uh, got them they were like you know not yeah. not even in the package yet. ivan who also makes majestic um the juice company is awesome and gave them to us before they even were packaged we kind of like got them like literally hand to hand um so we didn't have the allen wrench i went to my local vape shop and they're like, I don't know what you want us to do with this. I'm like, I'm just trying to like take these screws off. It didn't work. And then like late night at home, like very frustrated, wanting to play with my new toy. I went around and just like grabbed a bunch of random shit in my house and was like, what's going to open this? A paper clip actually can work in the meantime. To, like you have to get it at the right angle, but a paper clip will work, you know. So because it doesn't come in the standard Allen wrench set, their smallest... Um, Width doesn't fit in there, but a paper clip in a pinch. Yeah, and so see, work. I'm a tool whore. And so That's I all. went home and said, oh, I need an Allen key for this. And I don't have the appropriate Allen key. So that then becomes an event in my life where I have to go to <laughs> find the right like one. a Home Depot yeah. or a Lowe's and spend 45 minutes in the tool aisle trying yeah. to like eye up if you know this will fit. And I think I bought like 12 small allen wrenches to find the right size but now i have clip well now i know (laughs) uh so now i have extra (laughs) allen wrenches so i didn't love the allen wrench approach but i understand to try and reduce the size inside there the other thing i have to say is that uh it was a very well machined device but i'm finding that with all of the things that i put juice in i want to boil them first Definitely. Like I want to really clean them, and and so then this one really reminded me. Kind of, it just it smelled like a machine shop when I got it. So you know, I definitely I, wanted to. That frustrates the heck out of me too. Now, granted, we were given make... prototypes. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah, yeah. The, the fully boxed, okay. you know, version. Let's not let's. Okay, I'm not gonna um, bash them, but there are there are mods and and devices that come when you spend you know a hundred bucks for a dripping atomizer that thing should be cleaned free of machine oil yeah i I agree um there was actually and this happened to us today uh customer emailed us emailed me today and said we bought a mod from you i'm not going to say which one um you know i'm not certainly not here to disparage anyone i bought a mod from you and uh i opened it up the threads are full of gunk Right. And uh, and it's got like an oily residue on it. And so I said, well, that doesn't sound right. Let me go look at the other ones that we have in inventory. And I, every one of the same mod, yeah. and you open it up, it's clean on the outside. Sure. But the threads are full of gunk and it's got some kind of like machining oil yeah. that's still in there. and Like the lint from the box. And so, kind of like- you know, I said, look, I can swap it out for another one. It's going to be identical to that one. Uh, you know, I can give you a store credit and take it back. But, you know, that was, it's a real bummer for that customer who got the product and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't pristine out of the box. Yeah. And that's, you know. And a lot of people don't know that you should check what you're using for machine oil. You, you can pretty much smell it. Yeah, you yeah. Can, it's got, a, it's got definitely got like a yeah, almost weird kind of florally smell yeah, to it. It will smell like mm-hmm. machine oil. And, and if it smells like that, then you need to boil that sucker and and water and and or you know you don't have to boil it but you do need to want to get out you you definitely don't want to be vaping soapy, machine hot oil, soapy yeah. water a few washes and uh, scrub it down and make sure it's really clean because you don't want to be inhaling that stuff so sure. I, I mean i have to say for the derringer i love the size yeah right? i did want to first and foremost like the size of it is, is impressive the airflow is impressive and flavor is good the, once the, you do flavor the flavor is fantastic 
Um, you know, I've been playing around with the inner sleeve. I do tend to like all of mine wide open, but I think it works good at the second setting as well. Um, you know, if I had to give this an out of five score for the Derringer, well, first, Meriwether, what would you give it on a out of five scale? I would give it on the spot here. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole I idea. Yes, that's my job. I rate things one to five for juice all day. All day long. Your whole job. All one day. to five. Numbers. Coming Nobody said again. there was going to be math on the test. Um, okay. <laughs> out of five. Um, I would give it a 4.5 for two reasons. Okay. All right. First off, the good things. Really low profile. You know, you're not like you yeah, can throw it on. I like, can't say enough about how yeah. adorably small. Yeah. It's it makes me, it made really me want to go bust out all my 350 mods again just yeah. so I could have this, you know, tiny little it looks pea awesome. shooter mod. And even yeah. on my box, I love it because like this makes it really top heavy. It falls over with that. It just sticks on my desk, doesn't fall over. So looks wise, looks great. Um, I love the fact that it's called the Derringer, like a little pistol gun, like a little hooker gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That. Also, ironically, a lot of their marketing shows it next to a penny, and yeah. the Derringer is the gun that John Wilkes Booth used to kill Lincoln or to shoot Lincoln. It was uh, on a penny. Right, it yes. was on the penny. So I don't know that they intended to do that, but it is kind of funny to see the Derringer next to Lincoln in all of their marketing materials. I, I thought it was cute. So, okay, so four out of five. So that okay. was reason number one was the low profile. Low profile, great flavor, adjustable airflow. You can have a single or dual wrap You did say two there. reasons and then gave four. I, no, I, these are the good reasons. Okay. I have two reasons why it's not a five. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so, you know, overall, like I said, design, flavor, easy to wrap. Like you're not, like, there's nothing I hate more than going to wrap an atomizer. Spending time making beautiful coils, throwing them in there and having them break or snap or get messed up just because of some pins. I didn't find that with this. It was easy to wrap. The drawbacks for me, it's going to sound silly, was with the drip tip, you have to get the drip tip from them. They have kind of like a, can you show them? There's like yeah. a little lip there. I think that maybe it coming with like the wide bore, like drip top cap like an option for that or just a straight drip tip already in there or get rid of that little bit at the in between the atomizer and the so drip, the drip tip. tip can just sit right so down you can in put it? different no. drip tips in not just theirs you know like when i first got mine i put a bunch of my drip tips on i have some pretty oh, is low that proprietary pro like you can't oh, oh no I other see. drip tips will fit in there just if you have yeah, anything tall looks upper, ridiculous oh yeah you want there. a flat, yeah. flat just so you could put other drip tips that's like i said silly yeah. reasoning um and then no, also i agree with that the yeah. allen wrench thing you know it's silly but like i lose shit i'm spacey sometimes i have a million things i have like a hundred vendors to be talking to like i lose Things. She's There's, a busy lady. I'm a busy lady, you know, and so I don't know. Thankfully, the paper clip works, yep. but you know, needing the custom tools to work on something, you know, like when I used to live on a farm, I had a bunch of tools. I rent an apartment in LA. I have like oh, I could was, do a whole podcast about tools, <laughs> like tool time. Yeah, I could do I could do the tool. I don't know tool, if that's copyright tool cast all day long. Um, um, I am going to agree with your score, the four point five. Uh, it's by far my favorite asthma. Here's my two drawbacks. I'm going to agree with you on the Allen wrench, right? Um, my second drawback, and it's really a minor one, the 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 connection on the, the atomizer itself, the 510 connection, is a little bit long. And I'm a huge fan of hybrid mods. Uh, and I find that it doesn't work with every hybrid because sometimes I get a little auto firing because the pin is just a little bit too long. So I'd want to back that pin down a little bit but those were my only real gripes. I absolutely love the thing. And I, I have to admit, since I got it, I haven't used another atomizer, which is pretty rare for me and a yeah. box full of mods, you know, and atomizers behind my desk. It's, uh, you know, it's a great thing. I would love to say that you could go get one at Craft. We bought. We sold out. It sold out faster than any product we've ever had. We do still have the matching drip tips. Um, and I've got one copper top cap if anyone's got a. You got a Derringer out there. I'm gonna have to raid your palace soon. Come, come by anytime. Yeah. Um. So, so that's the Derringer atomizer from Praxis Vapors. Uh, we there do is, love it. The, we, I absolutely love it. There is a second batch in production. They may take a little longer. They didn't make enough, and that's the gamble I think with any new hardware manufacturer. You know, you don't want to make too many and sit on them. 
Um, but if it's hot, it's going to go fast. And this one went fast. Hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. Okay, so um, I want to kind of wrap things up here. Uh, I, I think it's good that we give some stuff away. Okay, right? yeah. So uh, I'm going to put you on the spot, David. I would like to give away uh, to one of our listeners the full line of, of flavors in 30 mil. How do you feel about that? I got the connections. You know the people I over know at the Ragtime people. Vapor. Smell and Ellen will be okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. Good smell and Ellen. Good, Good smell, smell and Ellen. Hold on, hold on a minute. Yeah. Yeah, She's okay you with that. You checked with the virtual CEO. That's the bat phone. The bat phone says, and I love it. You, what kind of phone do you have there? You just picked it up and it was automatically connected to the wife without yeah. pressing any buttons. No, she's listening in. That must she's, be that she's newest remote. She's Samsung. big sister. Yeah. yeah. Always um, listening. Uh, okay, so uh, so how should we do it? How, it's your stuff. So should we pick someone randomly from commenters? Should we make someone take some sort oh of action? God. Oh gosh, this is, you know, this is your this is your show, man. I mean, I look, whatever you want. Okay, well, let's do I'll it this provide way. provide it. I how, provide how the do, how do our listeners find Ragtime? Where are you at? Are you on the internet's? Yes, we're on the nets. Mm -hmm. uh, www.ragtimevapor.com. Vapor V A P O R. So R A G T I M E V A P O R. Dot com. Dot com. And then and you have a Facebook or a Twitter or yes. Instagram. Yes. You have uh, all those. Tw yeah, we do have all those. Twitter, we're not so much active on, but we're on it. But, um, you know, m mostly active on uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. So it would be at Ragtime Vapor. And, uh, Love the way you say that, Vapor. Yeah. Uh, okay, so why don't we do this? Uh, leave us a comment. It doesn't matter on what social platform, wherever we post links to this podcast, comment in and tell us in order to enter, tell us the era that David drew his inspiration from for ragtime. That should be Have a pretty to make easy him work one. for it. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, we will also give away a month free of craft vapory. If wow. anyone out there is wow. uh, is listening that's not already a craft subscriber. I'll hand curate uh, it myself. All you have to do for that is to comment, and we will randomly pick one of the commenters uh, to give that away. And you might want to let these people know, these great people that listen to your podcast. Yes. So far, just just Bacon Sandwich over here. Right. He's listener number so, one. And Big Sister. Bacon uh, good Sandwich. Smell yeah, and good, Bacon good Sandwich smell should Ellen. know that the full line... That sweet smell and Ellen is going to be providing. She's going to actually pack it up and send She's it out. She's going to pack personally. it up and it's okay. smell personally. good. That's going to be thirty mil bottles. That's not fifteen mil bottles. Right. That's thirty mil bottles of thirty milliliter bottles, and uh, in the nicotine level of your choosing. Okay. And let's add a T-shirt too. Let's add a T-shirt. Let's, let's add a T-shirt to the craft vapory box as well. Why not? We'll throw in one of our Cloud Kicker Society shirts. And one more thing. If you are so unfortunate as to not be the winner of this box from Ragtime, you can always go to www.craftvapory.com and go to our e-commerce and get it yourself. Um, and it, when you do that, you can use the code RESOLUTION, which will get you, uh, I believe, 5% off e-commerce orders or 10% uh, off your first subscriber's box. So there you go. There's a coupon code to use for Craft Vapory. And, uh, and if you subscribe to Craft Vapory, you automatically get a 10% discount off everything in the store uh, with the exception of sale items. So uh, if you want to get Ragtime on the cheap, the cheapest way to do that is to subscribe to Craft and then use your member discount to buy the line. Uh, of course, you can always request to get a bottle of Ragtime, specifically one that matches your flavor profile. Our curators will do that for you. We listen to what you guys say. We do, uh, or at least Fair. Meriwether does. I do. Um, I'm a good Meriwether listener. Meriwether and her team of curators. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. So, David, thank you. Thank you for being the first here, helping us pop our podcast cherry. If oh you my! Will. Oh my! Yeah, there's a. That's I'm dirty. For, took me back to high school. I'm down there. for him to have her V card. A, a, a V card. Like a virtual card, that, like virginity no. card, V oh, card. He's, you he, went there. I, you, you, you. Wow. Okay. I thought this was going to be a PG podcast. Now we it, are clearly in the NC PG, seventeen. No, range. I think we're still PG thirteen. Okay, PG thirteen. More yeah. podcast virginity. Okay. Yeah, you did like break you our said podcast virginity. That's here. like a little bit. Mm. 
Uh, I could have been referring to the dark berries. And I think I said <laughs> heck. Wow. I did. I'm following in line with the, the ragtime theme <laughs> there, too. Yeah. Um, so, so wow. So, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Meriwether, thank you for joining us. Where can people find you on the interwebs? Shitty Weather on Instagram. It's spelled S-H-I-T-T-Y-W-E-T-H-E-R on Instagram. Okay. Uh, and then people can find me at, at bad exec, B-A-D-E-X-E-C. Uh, don't don't expect too much there. I just basically post pictures of coffee and vapes. And, and baby. Oh, and then, of course, pictures of my baby. you want to see the cutest baby. baby in the world. Uh, and, of course, you can follow Craft Vapery at Craft Vapery on Instagram, Twitter, uh, where else are we? Facebook, Facebook, Google Plus, your mailbox, uh, your mailbox, and uh, and and of course on our website www.craftvapory.com. Uh, I want to thank Super Creative TV for giving us the use of their studio and for allowing us to be part of the Super Creative TV network. Uh, and of course, make sure to check out all of their great podcasts, including. Uh, the Pointless Podcast with Kevin Pereira, which is where we got the idea to do our very own craft cast. So uh, thank you all for listening and for watching. Until next time, uh, I am Josh. I am Meriwether. And I'm David from Ragtime Vapor. There you go. Uh, thanks so much, and uh, we will see you next time.